I am on the line right now with MJF, who has a very big opportunity ahead of him this Saturday at All Out. He's challenging John Moxley. Dictator John, Will. Dictator John. Can you say it that way the whole entire interview, please? I really don't want to have to leave. I will try to remember that. He has a very big title match against Dictator John at All Out for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. MJF, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's another great day in paradise here in Long Island, New York. And uh, unlike you, I'm not sitting in front of a green screen background. This is actually my very large home, and I am very excited to be living in it. There's a large home behind me, but, you know. It's just not yours. It's not as majestic. Well, if we're going to go there, uh, there, there was a documentary a few years ago that showed a home that you were in that might not have been yours. So That was fake news, Will. Everybody knows Kenny Johnson is an abysmal reporter and a terrible human being. So getting back to the topic at hand, you do have a title match this Saturday. It's very big. It's probably the biggest match of your young and promising career. Yeah, biggest but match be- in Dictator John's career as well. What were you going to say, Will? My apologies. Before that, uh, your lawyer, Mark Sterling, uh, had an issue last week. He has to face Dictator John on Dynamite this week. So... How are you handling that? How are you advising? It's an unfortunate necessary evil, William, because once again, Dictator John decided to use his ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculous antics uh, in association with his propaganda to make me, not just me, but my lawyer look bad. But here's what's actually going to happen. Mark Sterling is going to be the one coming out of there smelling like roses, and John Mox is going to be smelling like dog shit. And here's why. As I've stated previously at the contract signing, Jonathan Moxley, hell of a great brawler, but he's no wrestler, Willie. He's never been a wrestler, okay? Now, Mark Sterling, I have been training Mark since the announcement of this match. And I'm telling you, within the week's time that I've been training Mark Sterling, he's already a better in-ring technician than John is. He's already a better in-ring technician than most of the wrestlers are because he was being trained by one of the fastest and youngest rising stars in the history of professional wrestling. That being said, am I a little bit worried for Mark? Yeah, yeah. I'm so worried for him because the amount of fame and popularity and money he's about to make after he beats the world champion prior to my pay-per-view match against him will be absolutely awe-inspiring and ridiculous. And I don't know if he'll be able to handle the celebrity. Now this match, and I'll, I'll start by saying you deserve it. You earned it. You were the number one ranked. Undefeated, Will. Undefeated. But why ban the paradigm shift? I mean, the paradigm shift isn't a move. It's an abomination. It's, it's, it's a disgusting, terrible act of violence, and it indiscriminatorily tries to break anyone's neck. It doesn't care about who you are, what gender you are, what race you are. That's all that move is designed to do, is hurt people. And that's not right. Every time you use that move, it, it, you're literally potentially paralyzing somebody. And that could have been me, Will. It could have easily been me. I want to have a family one day. I want to be able to play catch with my son. I want to be able to go out to the ballpark with him. I want to attend his games. Hell, one day maybe he'll be a pro wrestler. I want to be able to help train my future uh, seed seed in my loin. So it's the reason the move has been banished is not for some, you know, uh, psychological warfare for for me over Jonathan. It's not for me to be able to uh, out wrestle him because I'm so fearful that he'll be able to beat me with that move. It's not that I'm fearful of losing because of that move. I'm fearful of losing my life because of that move, Will. So what people should be doing is thanking me because I stopped a potential murder from happening in AEW. That was important to straighten out because I've had a few people ask me or point out that John didn't beat Brian Cage with it and he didn't beat I've seen this. I've seen Brody this. Lee with that. So it's not... I'm not nervous about the arm bar. I'm not nervous about his sleeper hold. I'm not nervous about his uh, gotch pile driver. I have no control of my body in the paradigm shift maneuver. There is no way for me to be able to protect myself in any way, shape, or form. He has both my arms trapped. If I'm going to lose by a cross arm breaker, which I won't, so be it. If I'm going to lose via sleeper hold, which I won't, so be it. If I'm going to lose due to a gotch pile driver, which I won't, so be it. At least I could put my hands down on the way down, try to protect myself with the amount of limited energy I have left prior to him being able to hit that maneuver. But when it comes to the paradigm shift, I'm not banning this move to get an edge, Will. I'm banning this move because I'm trying to make AEW a better place. We've already referred to him as Dictator John many times just on this call alone, but 
he you didn't really have the same issue with any other champions in AEW so far. So what makes him unique in that aspect? He's the figurehead, Will. He's a guy who's our world champion. He's supposed to be the face of our company. Can you put John Moxley on a box of Wheaties? No, he'll scare children. Can you put John Moxley on a late night talk show? Can you put him in commercials and billboards and posters in movies unless he's trying to break somebody's neck? No, you can't. I'm a businessman. I'm a professional. I'm somebody that I can get in my suit. I can put on my scarf and I can go anywhere at any time. And I can represent our brand the way it's supposed to be represented because I am a professional wrestler, not a professional backlot brawler, not a professional gymnast, not a professional car crash stuntman. I'm a pro wrestler. And that is precisely why I had an issue with John, because he is the world champion. So when younger talent sees him with the world title, what do they want to do, Will? They want to imitate him. They want to copy his style because they think that's what it's going to take to become a top guy. I'm here to prove otherwise. When you win the title on Saturday, who are you dedicating that win to? Myself. <laughs> who, who else am I supposed to dedicate it to? Was anybody else in the ring there with me, Will? Just curious what your answer would be. I don't know. You've uh, been open in the past about your inspirations who helped shape who MJF the wrestler is. You've said Roddy Piper, Tully Blanchard are some of the influences. Uh, just curious, you know, maybe somebody that inspires you today, whether it's a colleague, a family member that, you know, you may you know maybe dedicate it to. I think if anybody inspires me, it's the fans who have been following MJF 2020. Uh, hashtag MJF 2020, please, if you're, if you're uh, watching this video right now, tweet it out. Um, they, they inspire me because they are the intelligent masses. And they're not one of these disgusting, ill-informed, pencil-necked humanoids that don't understand what's right from wrong. So those people inspire me, Will. Um, outside of that, wrestlers inspiring me? Not really. I mean, there's not really, a, if, if I can think of anyone, perhaps Chris Jericho, he might be the only person I have respect for in the AEW locker room. But outside of that, I really don't foresee it. On a related note, you have Wardlow in your corner. He makes sense. He's a very imposing individual, but as I pointed out, you've called Tully Blanchard an, an inspiration or an influence in the past and he's in the company now. So why doesn't, it makes sense to, you know, maybe align yourself with Tully or maybe it does like, have, have you perhaps down the line? What I'd like to say is this and will per, just so you know, me and Tully have had uh, our share of steak dinners. I've talked to the guy. I've picked his brain. I really like him. He's a sweetheart of a guy. However, there's a lot of lines being drawn in the sand in AEW. I mean, right off the top of your head, will name every single stable there is in all elite wrestling right now. Death Inner Christ. circle, the elite, death triangle, but there are a lot of lines being drawn in the sand, a lot of multiple guys forming these stables almost. And so far for me, at least I've had no re team Taz. There's another one, the FTW team. I've had no reason to form an alliance or a stable me and Wardlow have I'm undefeated. I've never lost. So why do I need more men around me? Will there be a day perhaps where I've realized that in order for me to get a fair shake in this company, since there is a lot of lines being drawn in the sand and you don't want to be the only man on an island alone um, during a war. Will I have to start talking to, you know, Wardlow about us potentially joining a group or starting our own group? Maybe, but as of right now, I don't foresee it happening because I really don't need any help. As you said, there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts going on, but there's also a lot of meat on the bone. Will. There's a, there's also a lot of talk about, a, a past stable that Tully's very familiar with coming back, and you're one of the names that a lot of the time gets mentioned. Hey, you! I seem to come up quite often. Yeah, and I and I'm tagged in a lot of these Mark posts. Um, and and it's sweet, you know. You guys like to do your fantasy booking, as you would call it, but it, you you can't. This is real life. You can't book real life. I, I I've spoken to some of the people that think I would be in a group with, and they all seem like sweetheart of the guys. But like I said, I'm kind of a lone wolf. Will, with the exception of Wardlow, I, I allow him. I, I allow him to be a part of this success train, and he's learning because of me. He learns every single week because of me. I let him pick my brain, and one day, you know, Wardlow, I think he's going to be able to put it all together. So, with that said, you would you admit that it's at least flattering that people consider you? as a, a worthy person for that role? Yeah, it's like the flair as the leader of that potential group. Of course it's flattering, but I have to read flattering stuff 24-7, Will. If I had to read everything that was said that was flattering about me, 
I, my eyes would bleed. I would be up 24 seven. Uh, so yeah, it's, you know, I'm not bending either left or right or backwards for it. You've been actually very cordial and pretty nice. You are really doing a 180 from a, the last time we were in a room together and sure. B the reputation that people want to place on you. So I guess has, you know, being in the title picture changed you at all? No, I think it was all truly a misunderstanding. I think people just didn't know where I was coming from. People don't like honesty. Honesty scares people, Will. And that's all I've ever been since the jump. Um, and I think people would try to, like, put me in these boxes. He's a heel. He's a, he's a heel, which I, I attest that word. I'm just being myself 24-7. Um, as time has gone on, I've realized that if I want to start this real revolution – not a fake one, not a fake paradigm shift. If I want to start a real revolution, I need some backing with this campaign. I, I, can't, I can't do it all by myself. And, uh, you know, you, it's a lot easier to track bees with honey. So, Do you enjoy being booed? I mean, it doesn't seem to bother you. And you, you say, and I believe you're being honest all the time, but, I mean, do you, do you embrace it almost to a point? It depends. Sometimes it really offends me because I feel I misunderstood, but other times... It, it only feeds me and it, and it satiates this hole I have. And we all have one, you know, because there's something about being in a room full of people that you have by the absolute balls. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is people should call me a puppeteer because that's what I do. I, I, I can manipulate anybody into feeling a certain way I want them to feel, but I would never do that because I'm salt of the earth. However, is it nice when you walk into a room and people are roaring and screaming and going absolutely ape? Of course it is, but that's why I get paid the big bucks. I spoke with Eric Bischoff after his Dynamite appearance a few weeks ago. He said he watched your segment. He thinks you're an amazing, amazing talent. MJF is that character that is a special character. They don't really come around that often. How do you feel getting praise like that when it's, you know, somebody in the industry at that level and, you know, somebody that you potentially sure. work with. I'm sure there's... I mean, Eric, Bisch have, Eric Bischoff is, is, is one of the greatest minds in the history of our great sport. I think anyone who disagrees with that is a complete buffoon. Um, it feels good to hear that, but at the same time, it's not something I didn't already know. Um, as I've stated, I'm going to be the guy who's going to be the leader in pro wrestling for the next 25 years. There's nobody else on the planet that can make that statement. I'm 24. In, in uh, 25 years from now, I'm going to be 49. How old is Chris Jericho? Chris Jericho's 49. So when I say that, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. This is simple math I'm giving you. And with my wrestling style that I'm already doing now at this point, being safe, being intelligent, using the ring to my advantage, using the referee's discretion to my advantage, I might be able to do this till I'm 70. So I, I, know, I already know I'm a once-in-a-lifetime performer. I already know that I cut better promos than perhaps anyone has in the history of this great sport. I already know that I put on wrestling clinic after wrestling clinic. The crazy thing is that people don't know and understand since I'm 24 now, I'm only going to get better. That's, that's scary, Will. That's really scary because I'm already a top name in the industry now. So, so I want to get back to your uh, championship address, and you've made it a point to call out what John Moxley does wrong. So yes. I ask you, what do you want to do right? What do you want to do with your AEW championship reign? There's been a few complaints like, tag ropes for example or different rules that fans or wrestlers don't agree with so mm. what one specific rule do you want to change as champion and like what kind of influence do you want to have it's not necessarily a, a, about changing rules it's about changing the culture because wrestling's on the docket and unfortunately when i watch aew dynamite i almost see anything but i see aew g all elite gymnastics i see aew c all elite Car, it's just, it's not what wrestling's supposed to be. And the reason that's happening, as I stated before, is while, while John Moxley's champion, people want to copy him and emulate him because they want to be a world champion too. But if everybody's doing this car crash style, then you're not getting any wrestling on the show. I want to show to people that you can be a top guy and wrestle like it's a sport and treat the sport with respect and treat the rules with respect and the referees with respect and the viewers with respect. Um, that's what I want to do as champion. I want to change the culture for the better because we deserve better. In saying that, do you have a match that you can point to that's from your career that would 
exemplify that wrestling style that you want to bring Jungle, back? Because me versus Jungle Boy would potentially go down as one of the greatest matches in AEW history. And it's something that people will watch back on and it'll remind them of the early Eddie versus Ray matches or the early Dean Malenko versus Jericho matches. Um, that, that's, that's how great it was. Um, that's the match I would point out to people because I always found it laughable when people would go, MJF's a great promo, but I don't know if he's a good wrestler. That was laughable to me. The reason I wasn't wrestling every week is because I'm a special attraction. You don't just throw me out there all willy-nilly. Those other guys, they can wrestle every week because they need to prove their worth. I don't need to prove my worth. I know how good I am. So when I would read those tweets, I would belly laugh. I'd be like, these people have no idea. And then after the Jungle Boy match, the narrative changed. Oh my God, not only is MJF one of the greatest promos in the, in the history of the business, he's actually a really good wrestler too. Yeah, no shit. There's a reason that I am the youngest and fastest rising star in the history of the business. Tony Khan wasn't going to put me in the position that he's, that he's given me the opportunity to be in by giving me these big time matches and giving me this mic time on his show unless he knew I was one of the best in the world. And I am. MJF, you have a huge opportunity this Saturday. September 5th. John Moxley at All Out. Dictator, Dictator John. AEW World Heavyweight Championship match, September 5th, this Saturday. In closing, do you have any advice for the youth of America? My advice is... Um, I would say stay in school, but I make a shit ton of money and I didn't. So do what you got to do. That's my advice. All right. Thanks very much for your time.